Hi, welcome back. Or if you're just joining, my name is Maya and welcome to my channel, Cranley Place, where I'm posting content on scarf style, knot tutorials, and more. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to be notified of new videos, which I'm publishing weekly. This weekend here in the US, we're supposed to fall back and change the clocks back an hour. I'm always grateful for the extra hours of sleep, but honestly, if we never had to do this again, you certainly wouldn't hear any complaints from me. So in this video, I'd like to talk a bit about daylight savings time and two related Hermes métiers, silks and timepieces. We'll take a look at some Hermes scarves along this theme and touch on Hermes's watchmaking, which interestingly passed a pretty significant milestone in the world of elite watches just last year. Let's get started. You may have already heard that earlier this year, in March 2022, just days after the clocks were adjusted to spring forward, that the U.S. Senate passed the Sunshine Protection Act of 2021, which would abolish clock changes in favor of permanent daylight savings time. Although dozens of states have considered legislation to end clock changes, only federal action can establish permanent daylight savings time in the United States. While the Sunshine Protection Act still requires approval by the House and the President to become law, the bill could mean major shifts in our clocks, daylight exposure, and obviously sleep. However, as of late October 2022, the House still had not discussed or voted upon the bill since the Senate passage. And unfortunately, there is no established timeline for House debate or voting on this bill. Additionally, the White House has not taken a position on it. But if it passes, and that's still a big if, permanent daylight savings time would take effect on November 5th, 2023. This would allow the transportation industry time to adjust its advanced scheduling. In practice, this would mean that the last clock change would occur with a spring forward in March 2023. After that, there would be no fallback in November and clocks would stay on daylight saving time permanently. You may already know that Arizona, Hawaii, and U.S. territories already follow permanent standard time and would be exempt from the law. These states and territories would continue using their current system of permanent standard time. Also, any other state that adopted permanent standard time before November 2023 would be exempt from the switch to permanent daylight savings time. Every state would have to choose one stable time, either standard time or daylight saving. But why was it created at all in the first place? Well, the U.S. started daylight saving time in 1918 and has implemented and repealed it at various times since then. It was created primarily to reduce energy consumption and promote commerce. The Uniform Time Act of 1966 established the current system of biannual clock changes between standard and daylight saving time. Permanent daylight saving time existed during wartime periods of 1918 to 1919 and 1942 to 1945 to conserve energy. The U.S. also experimented with permanent daylight saving time in January 1974 in the face of a mounting oil crisis. That ended in October 1974 because of significant public dissatisfaction with the darker mornings. But really, there is no single reason why the U.S. hasn't already abolished clock changes. Although surveys show that clock changes are generally unpopular, groups disagree about whether permanent standard time or permanent daylight saving time would be the best. Also, changing federal law can obviously be a lengthy process, which has helped keep the current system of clock changes in place. In keeping with this theme, there are several Hermes scarves that I thought we could take a look at. First, starting with one called La Ronde des Heures by Loic Dubijon, issued circa 1986. If you're interested in learning more about this artist, be sure to check out my review of one of his designs reissued as a double face earlier this year called Les Folies du Ciel. You'll see a link here in the upper corner. This scarf features a clock at its center, bordered by some text, Je compte les heures parmi des fleurs, 
or I count the hours among the flowers. This medallion is itself encircled by a dial of Roman numerals and the entirety surrounded by an eclectic mix of clocks and pocket watches, inspired, I imagine, by pieces in the Emile Hermes collection. The only ones I've seen of this recently in the pre-loved market have been at pretty steep premiums, but frankly this isn't a design that I've followed closely enough to notice any major price fluctuations. Next up is a scarf called Mécanique du Temps, also by Le Dubigion, issued in the early 2000s. It pays tribute to one of the most famous landmarks in Prague, the astronomical clock of the old town city hall, namely its astronomical dial. The old town hall in Prague was established in 1338 as the seat of the town's administration. The oldest part of the complex consists of the southern wing, a beautiful Gothic tower with a bay chapel, and this unique astronomical clock, known as the Orloge, pardon the pronunciation if I butchered that, and apparently every hour between 9 a.m. and 11 p.m. the Twelve Apostles appear. This is a design that is possible to pick up in the secondary market at fairly reasonable prices for a vintage piece. This next one was a part of a four-part Gavroche series by Pierre Marie in 2011, starting with Mademoiselle Soie, which depicted existing classical scarf designs from Hermès's archives, with a seamstress sitting in the middle, surrounded by the scarves and various sewing accoutrements. This time-related one, however, is called Monsieur Montre, which shows a man made up of parts of a watch, with a background comprised of various watch bands and watch parts as well. The other two in the series are Madame Queer, which is leather, and Monsieur Parfum, of course, perfume. While I don't actively search for any of these series, they generally seem to be pretty rare to pop up in the secondary market. This next one is a design also by Pierre-Marie that's been reissued several times in various formats since its original debut in 2012. Translating to Time Laboratory, he takes us on a journey through time from the Big Bang and dinosaurs, world explorers, and human achievements, as well as glimpsing into the future. This one has been fairly collectible since its introduction. I do see different formats occasionally on the secondary market at not entirely unreasonable prices. I will also add that it was recently made available as a silk twill giant triangle, so certainly possible to obtain that format if you're looking to collect the design and not a particular size. Last but not least, I'll include this design by Françoise Fassonnet, originally issued in 1963. While it is officially called Astrologie, it is often referred to Dies et Or, which appears on the central sundial. It was in Mesopotamia around the 3rd millennium BC that the first calendar was born, followed by the signs of the zodiac. They segmented the sky into 12 sequences that the sun takes a year to pass through. This is another design that has been reissued multiple times in different formats. The most recent ones I recall were a 140cm mousseline and a double-faced combo, Astrology Astronomie. The good news with these ones issued in multiple formats is that it, if it's really the design you're after, it is quite possible to find something either in the store or in the secondary market. Now turning attention from the silks to another house métier, watchmaking, I wanted to talk about the visual trick that turned Hermès into a serious competitor in the watchmaking world. In 2011, the house released a watch called Time Suspended, a mechanical watch with a fun complication. With the push of a button, the hour and minute hands would stop, effectively freezing a moment in time. A hand that kept track of the date slipped out of sight altogether. But, hidden underneath, the timekeeping mechanism continued to work. Theoretically, you could leave the hands locked in place indefinitely, a minute, a week, a month, or longer, until you push the button again, returning them to the correct time. After some strategic moves to vertically integrate its watchmaking business and draw the prestige of making watch movements in-house, Hermès in 2021, with its sales, broke into the top 20 of Swiss watchmakers for the first time. 
And I'm sure you probably know already, but Rolex is the number one Swiss brand by revenue, selling about a million watches annually. You may have heard me talk about some of the scarf-themed Hermes watches in past videos, such as C'est la Fête Arceau or the Folie du Temps. A new one for 2022 is called the Arceau Le Temps Voyageur, a world timer watch that in addition to showing the time where you are, it also shows time in 24 cities around the globe. While other Swiss maisons make such timers, Hermès's spin is that a small watch face can be moved around the dial to tell the time in other cities, with the quote-unquote home time shown in numerals at the top of the dial. The dial itself is a fantasy map of the equestrian world created for Hermès in a silk scarf called Planisphère d'un monde équestre by Jérôme Colliard. It is such a superb connection between the silk and watchmaking métiers and the house's equestrian heritage. So there you have it, a bit about daylight savings time, some collectible Hermes scarves in this vein, and a look at Hermes's rise in the watchmaking world. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you think in the comments. In future episodes, I'll share other scarf reviews, not tutorials, and more. So be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time.